there is power in transformation. So we decided to reimagine what it means to put students at the center of everything. At CUNY, our nearly 220,000 students speak 137 languages and come from every corner of the city and the world. We are first responders. We are grocery store workers. We are parents. We are children of immigrants. We are immigrants ourselves. We are ready to seize opportunities and become the next generation of leaders. We learn from professors who inspire us to wonder, question, criticize, change our minds, and change the world. We earn the career skills that employers need in this ever-changing job market. 80% of us stay in New York City after we graduate. Bringing our grit, skills, and talents with us. We represent the beautiful and complex diversity of our city and our state. In this spirit, we bring you CUNY Lifting New York. CUNY on three! One, two, three! CUNY! A pledge to transform our university into a place where we don't just survive, we soar. CUNY Lifting New York means providing students and faculty with the tools they need to succeed. CUNY Lifting New York means giving our 300 buildings and 25 campuses the TLC they deserve. CUNY Lifting New York means expanding our research that serves local communities and changes lives for the better. It is the pursuit of dreams in the name of equity, opportunity, and social justice. It's all of us working together to do right by the city we love. As the chairperson of the board, I'm delighted to see all of you here today as you hear about CUNY's strategic roadmap to transform the system by 2030, a plan which we have already made significant progress on. For 175 years, an anniversary we celebrated last year, CUNY has been providing a high quality education to people of all backgrounds. What started as the free academy has since grown to 25 schools, 25 colleges across all boroughs, all five boroughs, that each year award more than 50,000 degrees. Since May of 2019, and that is, wow, it is, time flies, uh, I've been proud to continue this mission alongside the Chancellor, fellow Felix Matos Rodriguez, whose historic appointment as CUNY's first Chancellor of Color continues to serve as an inspiration. You'll hear from him today about what we're looking to achieve in the next seven years with efforts, as I pointed out, that have already started. We're not waiting to 2030. This is an evolution, a progression, as we continue to move forward. As you may have already noticed on your way in today, we have just launched an ambitious advertising campaign, a degree for every dream. We have we have ads on subways, buses, Metro North, Long Island Railroad, billboards, Staten Island and Ferry Terminal. New Yorkers won't be able to miss CUNY. Yes. Representing our university proudly on these ads are our students, pursuing those degrees across our campuses. Some of them are here today, so let's give our students who are in this room a hand. This campaign is a vivid illustration of who we are and what our mission is, helping students pursue their post-pandemic dreams and lifting New York, New York City, New York State for decades to come. But don't take my word from this. I want to introduce one of the stars of the campaign, Jesse Duran. Jesse was raised here in Manhattan, uptown in Washington Heights. And after starting college, had to pause because of a debil debilitating chronic illness. Because of surgical complications, she became paralyzed and a wheelchair user. But that didn't stop her from pursuing her dream to earn a college degree. She just earned an associate degree in human services from BMCC this past spring, where she won the prestigious Blackstone Launchpad Award for her innovative product design idea. Wheel eating. <laughs> Wheel eating, a portable tray that adapts any table to accommodate wheelchair users while they're dining out. 
Jesse is continuing with us at CUNY, currently working towards a bachelor's degree in social work at Lehman College in the Bronx. She also plays for CUNY's standout wheelchair basketball team. She hopes to continue her education, eventually earning a PhD and opening her own practice. She's here today with her mom, her wife, and her two-year-old daughter, all of whom I'm sure are proud of her for her journey this far and for all that is still to come. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce you all to yet another of our many talented CUNY students, Jesse Duran. Person Thompson, thank you so much for, for the welcoming. Um, it's an honor to be welcomed by the leader of the Board of Trustees of my university and to be here today with you all. My name is Jesse Duran. I am proud to be a CUNY family. My own family includes my wife, Erica, a Brooklyn College graduate, and my almost two-year daughter, Jasmine, <laughs> a future CUNY graduate. High five. High five. Good job, baby. And they're both here today. <laughs> um, I agreed to be part of CUNY's Act campaign because I want to inspire other New Yorkers to pursue their dreams of going to college. I want them to see me a woman of color, a woman in a wheelchair, and think, if she could do it, I could do it also. I want my daughter to look up on the train and the bus and say, that's my mommy. CUNY has given me a chance, a path to move forward that will help me and my family. The university has provided me the support and a community, but returning to college wasn't easy. In 2021, I declared it my yes year. I decided to go back to college and, take, and it took me more than a decade because of my health. At BMCC, my professors and my classmates encouraged me to think big. That led me to create Will Eating, a portable lab chair that could connect to any table for people in wheelchair like me to go out and eat. My inter I entered my invention into the Blackstone Launchpad idea competition and I won. I won the national round for best consumer product and services. I love to win. Thank you. Thank you. I love to win. And this is why I decided to join the CUNY's wheelchair basketball team, the best team in the nation. Go CUNY! Playing has built my confidence, taught me teamwork, and has helped me channel my competitive spirit. Last spring, I graduated from my associate's degree and now I'm pursuing my bachelor's degree in social work at Lehman College. I hope to open my own practice one day. My CUNY journey isn't just about my dreams, it's about my parents' dreams. They immigrated to New York City from the Dominican Republic, hoping they'll give their daughter a full life of opportunities. Seeing me win awards, win basketball games, and literally being the face of success for CUNY, bless you, is so satisfying to me. And now for the next milestone, Introducing Chancellor Felix V. Matos Rodriguez, CUNY's first chancellor of color, our first Latino in, in, in the position. I first met the chancellor back in June at my graduation. I expect him to shake my hand and congratulate me. He did just that, but he also asked questions. He wanted to learn what motivated me. He also wanted to know what was I studying. He was curious, he was humble. He even held up the graduation line while we was talking. <laughs> <laughs> Chancellor Matos Rodriguez understands what makes CUNY special is the students. Me, you, every semester, over 225,000 of us engage in classes. 
driven by the pursuit of something greater. So thank you, Chancellor, for having me here today and for working to make our system a better for all of us. I look forward to hearing you, how we all can help transform CUNY, because one day, hopefully not too soon, Jasmine will trade in her CUNY onesie for a cap and gown. <laughs> thank you. My little high five. <laughs> what can I say? Thank you, Jesse, for that incredible introduction. Why don't we give Jesse another big, big round of applause? I am truly in awe of your determination and perseverance. Uh, I also hear that you have a pretty mean shot on the court, and uh, I am so happy because of that, you're our side, you're part of Team QE. So again, congratulations, Jesse, and we're all cheering for you to achieve your dreams. Jesse, as you heard, a mommy, right? A wife, an athlete, student, an aspiring social worker is an inspiration to all New Yorkers. She is a model CUNY student. Our students overcome obstacles with grit and tenacity. They are critical to the future of New York. And that's what we are going to talk about today. How CUNY must and will build on its success for students like Jesse and for all of New York. First, I'd like to thank Chair Thompson and all the trustees for their unwavering commitment to our university. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank all the college presidents and the members of my cabinet who are instrumental to making this university system work and many of whom are in attendance here today. Thanks also to our partners in public and private in the private sector joining us today, to the elected officials that Chair Thompson acknowledged earlier, and to our many philanthropic partners who are here today. Thank you for your support for what we do. It is fitting that we're holding our State of the University at Hunter College where I started my CUNY career as a faculty member and the director of the Center for Puerto Rican Studies, Centro. Since I've been honored to serve as president of Austos Community College and of Queens College, and since 2019 as your chancellor. As many of you know, I'm a historian. So I always believe that to look forward and envision the future, you have to understand your past. I'm going to bring you back to 1961. That was the year CUNY was formed as a unifying system of seven colleges with a mission of expanding access to quality higher education to New Yorkers of all backgrounds. That vision was and remains that an integrated, and I want to repeat, integrated system is the best way to meet the needs of an ever-changing city with each campus maintaining a robust sense of identity. Six decades later, with another 18 colleges and professional schools under the CUNY banner, we have fulfilled much of that promise. But I don't think we have achieved our full potential yet. We're working very hard on it. Two years ago, we began thinking about life after the pandemic. What we envisioned was just not returning to normal. We had an opportunity to rethink what it means to be a public university in New York City, and we needed to find new ways forward in a time of increasing challenges and limited resources. Our goal was beyond navigating a health crisis. We thought to create a bigger, better, and bolder CUNY. We embarked on a nearly two-year process that produced a strategic roadmap to transform CUNY into the nation's foremost student-centered university system by 2030. A CUNY commitment to expanding access to underrepresented students, advancing student success before and after graduation, strengthening 
academic quality and scholarly excellence, and creating the state-of-the-art facilities that are indispensable to our teaching and research mission. We called our roadmap CUNY Lift in New York. And I think you all have seen this and have copies of this, of our plan. This are not just aspirations. They are CUNY's obligations to New York State and New York City. We graduate 50,000 students each year, more than three quarters of whom are students of color. And more than 80% stay right here in New York City. 80%, right? And they have a massive impact on the city. Our graduates contribute to every aspect of our city's economic, civic, and cultural life. They diversify every sector of its workforce and supply large numbers of our new teachers, nurses, and professionals each year. As well as the current New York State Attorney General, the New York City Mayor, the City Council Speaker, several members of Congress, and I could go good on, but you get the point about our impact. All right? Our students are clearly well prepared, but they also need reliable and direct pathways to careers. And the city's employers and industries need a pipeline to our graduates. And that's exactly what we're here for. Today, I'd like to offer a vision for CUNY for the next seven years and beyond. Let me start with one measure of our success, enrollment. Enrollment might sound just like a lot of numbers, but it's fundamental because it means more New Yorkers having a path to a better future. It's a tangible measure of how well we're delivering on our core mission of providing access to a first-rate education to everyone in our city, regardless of means or background. I am sure everyone here is well aware that the pandemic hit CUNY as it did universities and colleges across the country really, really hard. But we have a reason to believe that we have turned a corner. For the first time in three years, our enrollment is on the upswing. We can all clap to that. Our preliminary data shows our freshman class is up more than 4% and transfers are up nearly 7%. Enrollment is up at our community colleges, it is up at our senior colleges, and more of our students are attending full-time than ever. It is wonderful to see so many new faces on all our campuses in this fall semester. More students means more access and opportunity. This is good for CUNY, but this is good for New York. Over the next few years, we hope to continue this positive trend by implementing new approaches to recruitment, financial aid, scheduling, and support services, and by being more creative in how we market our programs and attract and retain our students. A key part of our strategy is to meet students where they are. We will do this by building our online offerings and by exploring new models of instruction and scheduling to maximize access and flexibility. We launched CUNY Online in 2021 and now have 175 fully online degree programs with another 30 in development over the next year. We plan to double the number of certificate and degree programs that are fully online by 2030. At the same time, we are strengthening our partnership with the New York City Public Schools. Yesterday was a beautiful day. I was with Chancellor Banks at the City College Academy of the Arts, one of our 20 early college high schools, where we handed out personalized acceptance letters to seniors. It was a magical moment. <laughs> Citywide, 65,000 high school seniors will be getting personalized welcome to CUNY letters offering admission to one of our community colleges and providing them with information about all our colleges and our programs. And this month, in October, we're also waiving the application fee for all New York City public school seniors and hosting more than 100 information events in our campuses for all students. 
This is the time of the year when seniors are applying to colleges and we need to say loud and clear, there is a place for each one of you at CUNY. Yes. And I want to thank Chancellor Banks for supporting us and joining us in this venture. And thanks also to Governor Hoko for the initiatives that she's helped to launch to make it easier for all New York high school graduates to attend college. One of the many ways she is helping us transform higher education. So thank you to Chancellor Banks and to Governor Hoko. Our graduates come to CUNY to launch their dreams. But what happens when they graduate and need that first job? This is the subject of our next priority, improving student career outcomes. CUNY students are smart, ingenious, and highly motivated. They leave our campuses eager to contribute to the workforce. What they don't have often is exposure to expanding fields or professions and the direct connections to employers that they need to begin their careers. We want more employers to turn to CUNY campuses as fertile ground for recruitment. We want them to engage more with our students and help them get ready to succeed because we know that the more employers work with our students, the more CUNY students that they will hire. I am happy to say that over the past four years, despite the disruption for the pandemic, we've made progress in this area like never before in our history. We have expanded our Office of Career and Industry Partnerships to facilitate our engagement with employers. Already, we are working with J.P. Morgan Chase, EY, IBM, Mount Sinai and Accenture, to name just a few. This partnership is called the New York Job CEO Council, and it aims to hire 25 CUNY graduates by 2030. And I want to thank Kristen Barnett, the Executive Director of the Council, who's joining us here today <laughs> representing the Council. Another partnership with CenterBridge partners, Goldman Sachs and Bloomberg is cultivating and training CUNY students for careers in the financial industry. CenterBridge, a global investment firm, became a founding partner of the CUNY Futures in Finance Initiative and hired only CUNY students for their summer internship program this year. And we're also building stronger bridges to well-paying jobs in public service. One of my favorites is the CUNY MTA Internship Program, marrying two of New York's most iconic signature brands. Our only problem in this program is that it's too popular. The program received in its first year more than 16,000 applications for just 150 slots in the first year. I'm sure the MTA is going to do something to increase those numbers soon. But we have many partners helping us to pursue our ambitious strategy of building a bridge from classroom to career, but we clearly need more to, more to follow their lead. That is why I invite more New York employers to partner with CUNY to open doors to our graduates. We need you, and more importantly, you also need us. But working with industry partners alone won't get the job done. Our faculty and staff are the essential partners of career success. One of our biggest steps forward this year is an exciting new initiative to integrate career connections into the curriculum for all majors. This idea came from our faculty. We surveyed them and 94% see it as part of their responsibility to help CUNY students prepare for their future careers. But many faculty said that they lack the tools and the training to do so. And thanks to a trailblazing group we call the Career Success Fellows, we've grown the network of faculty who are redesigning their courses to include that connection between classes and career. And we have a number of them in the audience and I wanna give them a big shout out for the work that they're doing in this field. Thanks to city and state funding, we're also expanding paid internships for our students. We are pleased to announce that in this year's budget, Governor Hochul designated 1.8 million for more paid internships in our careers across the disciplines program. 
We, you can clap. All, 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 all that is money coming to support our students. We receive another boost from Governor Hoko, who this year launched our Spring Forward Initiative that placed 600 CUNY students in paid internships in small businesses, tech startups, nonprofits, corporations, and government agencies. And this year's city budget again funded the CUNY Inclusive Economy Initiative, a public-private partnership driven by Mayor Adams that will prepare more than 3,000 students a year for internships and full-time jobs. This city and state funding will give our students the career skills they need. By 2030, we expect to triple the number of students who could play, who complete paid internships at CUNY. Yes. And back to our students. One of those students is Derek Oduro, a sophomore at Bronx Community College who interned at Mount Sinai Hospital through the Spring Forward Initiative. Derek recalled, some patients come to the hospital scared and frustrated because they're in pain and they're sick. I learned to tell them it's going to be okay. Derek learned compassion. That is something you can't, you can't quite teach in the classroom. That comes from one-on-one -on -one interactions with patients who might, who might be coping with the worst day in their life. Derek, who couldn't be here today because he didn't want to miss class, so we want to give a shout out to Derek, right? <laughs> Derek is like half of all our CUNY students, the first in his family to attend college. 75% of all our students are also students of color. We have an obligation to help these students achieve their dreams, which brings me to our next priority, which is addressing historical inequities. Over the past years, we've developed innovative academic support programs that have had a significant impact on retention and graduation rates for students from underrepresented groups. CUNY, for example, is partnering with the National Institutes for Student Success at Georgia State, a national leader in the use of data-driven diagnostics research to improve student retention, graduation rates, and achievement. The Institute is in the middle of an intensive four-month process working with five CUNY colleges, analyzing their unique data and practices. This process will resort in a customized playbook for each of the five campuses to help them shape practices and programming. Eventually, our plan is to do this work across all our undergraduate campuses. Diversity and equity take many forms, and for us, it includes an ambitious effort to reimagine and expand the university's program in racial and ethnic studies. Three years ago, with a three million gift from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, we launched our Black Race and Ethnic Studies Initiative, which we call BRESI. Today, BRESI has funded 126 projects involving faculty, students, and staff at every level and on every campus, all seeking to advance the way our university, our city, and our society understand and engage with the complexities of race and ethnicity. I got a taste of the work myself earlier this year when a group of Brooklyn College students gave me a tour of the Flatbush African burial grounds during their semester-long paid internship to protect the site. Some of the Bresci faculty and scholars are here, so let's give our faculty a big, big round of applause. <laughs> Equity isn't only about race or ethnicity or socioeconomic status. You met Jessie a few minutes ago, and she represents our ne nearly 10,000 students with disabilities. There's a significant and long-standing employment gap for people with disabilities, and CUNY's culture of inclusion demands that we address it just as we do with any other inequity. To make good on this promise, we have a terrific academic internship and career advisement program for students with disabilities, which is called CUNY Leads, as well as our trailblazing, inclusive, and adaptive athletics program. I am proud to say 
that 70% of, of CUNY students with disabilities are employed after graduation, and that is double the national average, and we're very proud of that track record. <laughs> with diversity comes responsibility. I believe very strongly that a key role of higher education, especially at a great public university like ours, is to help shape the next generation of citizens. We often talk about being an engine of upward economic and social mobility, but there's something that I like to call civic mobility. It's part of our job to turn out graduates who are well-informed, socially aware, and equipped to navigate the complexities and conflicts of today's world. It's in that context that we become increasingly attentive to the racial, ethnic, and cultural climate on our campuses. We must be absolutely clear that hate has no place in our university and in our city, and we need to back it up with action. And so, we have responded to the concerns of our students, alumni, and others in our community by doing more to build bridges and confront bigotry and discrimination in our system and in our city. And that is why, in the past year, CUNY has launched a portal to facilitate reporting acts of discrimination, distributed three quarters of a million dollars on programs to address bigotry and hate, and created an advisory council in Jewish life. Some of the members are here in the audience in attendance, and I want to thank them for their support and guidance. It's ongoing, relentless work, but we have no tolerance for anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, racism, homophobia, anti-Asian bigotry, and the hate of any kind in any of our campuses. No university can claim to be student-centered without being attuned to how long it takes students to graduate and whether there's an institutional obstacle that delay them in an unnecessary way. What we know is that the student's time to degree completion directly correlates with their likelihood to graduate. And the effect is amplified for students of lower socioeconomic backgrounds who often have fewer safety nets. At CUNY, many of our students earn associate's degrees at one of our seven community colleges and then transfer to one of our 11 four-year colleges. But there have been flaws in our transfer system. Many students who have earned associate degrees lose credits toward progress in their major when they transfer to a bachelor's program in the same major at a senior college. It's a vestige of the era before 1961 when the city's colleges operated independently, and an important area where we have fallen short of the vision of a fully integrated university. But we're fixing it. By the end of the next year, students will be able to transfer without losing credits earned in a major when they move between CUNY colleges. That's and we estimate that the improved process will save students to transfer on average, four excess credits and $1,220 in tuition by the time they graduate. And that is money our students can use for food, housing, childcare, and other living expenses. I, I want to thank and give a shout out to Chair Thompson and our committee board of trustees for their leadership in moving this important issue forward. Another crucial system-wide goal for the coming year is a large-scale improvement in our facilities and technology. The university has nearly 300 buildings, and their average age is more than 50 years. Some are far older than that. Bringing our facilities up to modern standards at all of our campuses is one of our most urgent challenges and crucial commitments. We are in the midst of a five-year capital program totaling $5.5 billion, and we are grateful to Governor Hoko and the state legislator for their investment and their support. <laughs> to give you a sense, we currently have 180 projects under construction, 300 projects in the design phase, 
and 43 were completed in the last academic year. These projects range from a new nursing center at Lehman College to roof replacements and HVAC upgrades at five of our senior colleges. And HVACs might not sound incredibly sexy, but didn't we learn how important they were during the COVID pandemic? All right. So when you consider CUNY's footprint in the city, you realize what an important role our colleges play as an educational, cultural, and economic anchor in each of their communities. This summer brought a great example of this with the opening of the Louis Armstrong Center in Corona, Queens. The new center across the street from the Louis Armstrong House, a national historic landmark overseen by Queens College, would expand Armstrong's legacy as a music icon and celebrate his connection to the community that he loved. And if you have not been to the center, you have to go. Uh, it's a wonderful space. One of the projects that we're also most excited about is the transformation of Hunter's College Brookdale campus into a state-of-the-art jobs and education hub in Kips Bay to be called SPARK, the Science Park and Research Campus, and slated to be open in 2027. This historic investment from the city and the state that our governor and mayor announced last October will make New York a global leader in creating and attractive jobs in life sciences, healthcare, and public health, and it will create a pipeline from local public schools to CUNY and from CUNY to careers in these growing and essential fields. But there's another way that CUNY has a profound impact on the city and it's one that is sometimes overlooked. Our cutting edge research is steadily on the rise with growing support from public and private funders. Last academic year, we raised $633 million in sponsor research, a record high for CUNY. And because we know the quality of our faculty and researchers, we don't want to stop there. Our goal is to increase that number by 20% by the end of the decade. And it is not just about the economic impact of our research enterprise measure in dollars. It is also about how this work improves the quality of life of all New Yorkers. Our more than 10,000 researchers and staff are working to alleviate disparities in public health and pursuing advances in computer and data science and biomedical engineering, to name just a few areas of public impact. Now, let me tie this all together for you as we come to the conclusion of my address. Everything I laid out today is critical to meeting the promise to lift New York City. When we talk about improving our students' career outcomes, we have to back it up with actions that make our goal possible. Creating partnerships with employers and embedding career development in our classrooms are key. But so are the measures we're taking to keep students in school and on track to graduate and join the workforce. Our vision needs to be broad enough that everything we do helps to reduce long-standing educational, economic, and social inequities. Improving our facilities does that, so does building up our research enterprise. Everything is connected. We have been aspirational, and we will be accountable. From now to 2030, we will publish our goals every year and provide updates about our progress on a website on an ongoing basis. Yes. Okay. We, we are also very aware that these are challenging times for our city and our state. But we also know that we have overcome difficult challenges at other moments by investing in education. And so we thank our partners in government, industry, and philanthropy, and we call on them and all New Yorkers to help fulfill our ambitious, transformative agenda. CUNY is a vast and complex and wonderful institution, a community more diverse than any educational system in the country and with a rich historical legacy. Over 175 years, no university system in America has done more to advance the ideals of access and opportunity 
or to elevate and expand the middle class. Now that legacy falls to us. Our mission has never been more clear. CUNY will be an indispensable part of lifting New York. We are committed to doing that better, smarter, and in more ways than we ever have. This is our promise to our students, to Jesse and her daughter, to our faculty, to our entire community, and to all of you in New York. And with all of you behind us, we will raise to the challenge. Muchas gracias and thank you very much.